Our first speaker today is Andreas Rosenthal. He's a senior policy advisor at Chatham House, president of Rosenthal and Associates, former uh, Mexican ambassador to the United Kingdom. And uh, Andreas, take it away. Uh, thanks, uh, Jim. Thank you very much. And thanks to the World Policy Conference for the invitation. Um, Latin America, perhaps, as you started off by saying in the United States, is not something a lot of people used to read about. But I think today, Latin America is very much on the front burner of domestic US policy and also in terms of uh, foreign policy. Uh, whether it's because of uh, issues related to migration or questions relating to economic growth or populist presidents that have been elected in many of our countries uh, as a result of uh, an enormous amount of dissatisfaction by the population uh, of regarding previous administrations, previous governments. Uh, there's an enormous amount of volatility going on. And um, I think that has put Latin America more in the forefront of interest in the US, but also in Europe and in the rest of the world. In a, in a very general way, uh, the region, if you count it from Mexico all the way down to uh, the Antarctic and include the Caribbean, the English-speaking and Spanish-speaking and French-speaking Caribbean, uh, is not doing well. Uh, we're not doing well economically, with very few exceptions. Countries like uh, Brazil and Mexico, the two largest economies in the region, are uh, growing at either minimal rates or, in the case of my country, Mexico, uh, probably towards zero real growth this year. A lot of it is also self-inflicted, so that uh, one cannot put the blame on a global downturn <clears throat> in terms of economic growth the way one could with China or with some of the European countries. Um, if, you, if you remove Venezuela from the equation, because Venezuela's growth is negative and has been negative in, in a very large way for the last uh, few years, uh, we are not moving fast enough to uh, be able to deal with the annual new entrance into the labor market. So in addition to other problems, we have a social problem of young people who can't get a job and many of whom don't study either. And so these so-called ninis, uh, in Spanish, ni trabajan ni estudian, uh, is a very serious problem in, in my country and I think in some of the other countries as well. And another issue which I think has happened and, and is part of the scenario these days, is that the region as a whole is retrenching from uh, global and regional affairs. We are looking very much introspectively within our own countries um, as a result of the economic contraction, but also as a loss of interest among voters. Uh, voters today are much more preoccupied with their own pocketbook issues with uh, issues relating to violence, organized crime, uh, the migration issue. And so we are very uh, easily uh, abstaining from a larger participation as we have had in the past on the global scene. And I think this is particularly true of Brazil and Mexico. We both had leadership roles in different issue, on different issues, um, climate change and uh, other issues, and we are now very much uh, on our own. Uh, the president of Mexico, for example, current president of Mexico has been in office for 10 months, hasn't left the country once, didn't go to the G20 summit, didn't go to the UN General Assembly, didn't even go to the Pacific Alliance summit, which is uh, a Mexican creation. Uh, and, and I think this is very indicative of this retrenching um, into, into an introspective world of both economic, political, and social issues. 
Um, so as a result of all of these factors, I think Latin America is going to be, to use an, a, a, a British expression, punching below its weight uh, in, in the global, on the global stage at a time when the opportunity to lead, and we've heard a lot during this conference about lack of leadership, the opportunity to lead uh, is very present. Uh, but none of our leaders, none of our domestic leaders, are uh, really willing to take this on. They are much more co concentrated on their own uh, domestic issues. I'll just very quickly go through uh, some of the highlights of countries that are in trouble. Uh, I'll start with Venezuela, where, as you know, because it's been in the headlines a lot, there's a humanitarian crisis, there is a government that's, whose legitima legitimacy is being challenged uh, by uh, another uh, leadership uh, push. Um, you have a, a population that has left Venezuela, about four, not, four million people are projected to have left Venezuela uh, by the end of next year if things don't change there. Um, you have a Russian-Venezuelan alliance that has uh, entered uh, the picture, which is something that replaces the old Cuba-Russian alliance. So Mr. Maduro and the Venezuelan um, government in power at the moment is being supported basically by Russia. Uh, and, and that is something which obviously upsets the U.S., and so the U.S. decided that as a matter of priority in its foreign policy, it was going to move for regime change in Venezuela. Well, um, two years later, there's no regime change in Venezuela. The U.S. foreign policy has failed miserably, uh, and there is no perspective, as far as I can see, of a change today in what's going on in Venezuela. So we will probably be faced with a great deal more humanitarian um, tragedies uh, in the coming months. In Ecuador, a more recent issue, uh, you have a president who is being uh, assaulted by public opinion uh, because of a reduction or elimination of subsidies for gasoline. Uh, and he has had to move the capital, his government, from the capital of uh, Ecuador, from Quito to Guayaquil, which is uh, an indication that he's, to some extent, the government has lost control of what's going on in the capital city. Uh, Argentina, we've heard the story before. Argentina has been an up and down roller coaster for most of its history, having been one of the richest countries in the world. Again, defaults on uh, its international obligations. Uh, puts the IMF in a serious problem because of the $55 billion that the IMF has pledged to support Argentina. And there are elections coming up uh, later this month uh, where most probably uh, the current president will be ousted uh, by, again, uh, the Peronist populist movement, um, uh, which will be headed by um, a candidate Fernandez. Uh, Nicaragua, Peru, Haiti. Haiti is another uh, tragedy. Uh, again, after the earthquake, after all of the suffering that the Haitian people have had, they've had six presidents in the last two years and they're unable to find a way to govern. And the current president is again also being assaulted in the streets by popular opinion, uh, dramatically demonstrating against him and asking for his resignation. Uh, in Peru, uh, the last four presidents of Peru, three of them are in jail, and one of them had to commit suicide because he was going to be discovered as having been involved in a corruption scam. Um, Nicaragua, Nicaragua, again, a country that at one point was looked up at because it overthrew a dictatorship, a Somoza dictatorship of many, many years. Uh, now, the uh, Sandinistas who took over and ejected the Somoza government are back in a dictatorship mode. Uh, the current president, his wife, run the country. They've now been re, 
designated, and, uh, and there also there is a, a, an economic crisis. So putting those countries on one side and talking about my country and Brazil, and uh, Carlos Ivan will, will be much more uh, detailed on the Brazilian situation, uh, we have this very many of the same problems. We have a problem of tepid growth. Um, we have a rising middle class that demands things from government that government uh, so far has not been able to give. We have corruption scandals. Uh, we have violence uh, in the cities, uh, organized crime, uh, drug trafficking, things which really have permeated our daily lives and which at the end of the day are creating uh, a great deal of, of uh, dissatisfaction by our people. So not a good story, uh, I'm afraid to say. Um, and I know that uh, we'll hear something about what investors believe Latin America still offers. But uh, the fact is that uh, for a Latin American, it's not a good time.